Hello, today we shall see the swing motion. So it has in the earlier lecture it has been established that for winding the coils on the bobbin, the vertical movement of the bobbin and therefore the bobbin rail um, is a chosen option as against the vertical movement of the flyer. So let us see uh, the movement that is given uh, to the bobbin uh, once again. Uh, the speed comes from the uh, cone drums through the differential motion and this is the wheel G that will finally drive the bobbin shaft and then these two bubbles P and Q uh, through which the bobbin is actually rotated. The variable speed to the bobbin comes via the differential box. Uh, that is this differential box is mounted on the machine shaft and this machine shaft does not have any vertical movement but um, when it drives uh, the bobbin and the bobbin shaft uh, through G and N and P and Q here uh, we must remember that this particular shaft has got a along with the bobbins has got a vertical movement up and down. One must note here that the wheel G is mounted on the machine shaft and it transmits the speed to the bobbin shaft that has a vertical movement um, that is uh, up and down movement. So the arrangement for driving the bobbin shaft wheel, um, let us look at that. This is our gearing diagram and um, here there is a diagram which is shown which shows wheel G over here um, from the side view and this is the wheel N which it is driving. G being fixed and N having a vertical uh, motion up and down and these are connected via this link and this particular wheel which is marked as B over here. In the above diagram the wheel G drives the bobbin shaft uh, wheel N that has a vertical movement therefore the wheels are connected by the links D and E so that the gears maintain the contact with each other during the up and down movement of N. So one must uh, understand here that in case uh, this particular link as well as this particular wheel was not there then this N would have easily lost contact with G suppose this entire um, system was not there then as this N is moving upwards it will lose contact with G and the speed uh, that is that needs to be transmitted from G uh, to N will never be passed on. So this kind of an arrangement of links and this wheel is necessary. Uh, one more thing to note here is that as this um, N is moving up and down, the dotted um, uh, lines show the position of N at its up, up, uh, uppermost, uh, the topmost position um, and also the position of this B during that time as it is uh, moving along with it and maintaining the contact. At the same time, we can see this the most, uh, the bottommost position of N where again this B is helping to maintain the contact. So this link along with B will be moving um, in, in this fashion. Disadvantage of uh, swing motion and what is the option available to us, let us take a look at that. So if this is the swing motion, the arrangement for driving the bobbin shaft is epicyclic. Um, in the sense we can uh, slightly see over here this particular uh, B has got a movement in this manner um, as compared to um, in relative to G. So it is somewhat even um, uh, like an epicyclic uh, train of gears where it is revolving as well as rotating to a small extent also. This is an epicyclic arrangement and the vertical movement of N changes its position of contact with wheel B um, which is shown by dotted lines which interferes with the speed of G leading to tension variations in the roving. So um, since this acts like an epicyclic train of gears, uh, there will be some sort of uh, interference of speed um, of, uh, with, the, uh, with the speed of G which leads to tension variation in the roving. So this particular swing motion might not be the ideal way of driving the bobbin shaft um, uh, from, uh, from a shaft or from a machine shaft or other from a differential motion which is mounted on the machine shaft. So then how to avoid this or rather how to reduce this tension variations uh, that might develop in the roving. Uh, so there is one more option available to us which we can use. The modern machines um, use this and that is an efficient method to transmit uh, the speed in such a situation from G to N would be to use a Cardan joint. Um, therefore transmission of rotation is achieved using Cardan shafts or telescopic shafts. So 
this is how it is done uh, nowadays uh, on modern machines this is a differential box and simply uh, this particular gear uh, which is a part of the differential box would drive um, let us say this is the n gear of the bobbin shaft and further on this would be connected with um, with the uh, with the bobbin rail uh, via a cardan shaft now let us try and understand what is a cardan shaft um, so um, this area has been explained in the uh, on the next slide in the in the way of a video in this video we will explain what a universal joint is we will show the difference between cardan joints and constant velocity joints and we will see where universal joints are used the universal joint is a mechanical device that allows one or more rotating shafts whose axes are inclined to each other to be linked together allowing the transmission of torque and rotary motion for this reason universal joints are classified as torque transmission devices the universal joint consists of an intermediate cross pin member simply known as the cross the size of the cross is determined in order to obtain the best compromise between the dynamic features of the rotating elements of the joint and the flexural properties of its pins. The cross links two yoke shafts together. Each pair of yoke is positioned at right angles to the other. The cross allows each yoke to rotate around the Y and Z axes. The yoke shaft connected to the engine is called input shaft, while the other one is called output shaft. The input shaft transmits its rotational movement to the output shaft. The yokes are designed to overcome any elastic deformations, and they also keep aligned the bearing seats of the cross. These yokes are usually made of steel, and they are manufactured to stringent quality and safety standards. The angle between the two shafts is called operating angle. With standard yokes which rotate for short periods of time, it is possible to reach an operating angle of 45 degrees. While for continuous use, an operating angle of 35 degrees shall not be exceeded. The transmission ratio of the yokes does not remain constant over time. Universal joint can be used to accommodate the misalignment between two parallel shafts. The telescopic universal joint is, however, used in the agricultural sector, especially on vehicles such as tractors. This consists of two simple joints connected by a telescopic shaft, which is able to accommodate variations in length between the tractor and its attachment. These variations can occur during the tractor maneuvers due to the roughness of natural terrain. The constant velocity joint, on the other hand, has a slightly different working principle. It always links an input and an output shaft together, but unlike the universal joint, this one has the ability to keep the transmission ratio constant over time regardless of the rotation angle of the shaft. Usually, a constant velocity joint has an external protection. Its heart is represented by the inner core, through which the torque and the rotary motion are transmitted. The connection between the two shafts takes place thanks to a series of steel balls placed one by one inside a cage. Thanks to this cage, the bells are free to rotate independently inside its grooves, allowing the articulation of the shafts as well as the transmission of motion. This type of joint is protected by a rubber boot, a CV gaiter, usually filled with molybdenum disulfide grease. The rubber boot, in fact, protects the joint from water and dust damages over time. Many people may not know what a constant velocity joint is or what it is used for, even though it is a very important device for every vehicle. Constant velocity joints, in fact, are mainly used in vehicles with front-wheel drive. 
but also in several modern rear-wheel drive cars with independent rear suspension. In this last case, these joints are used at the ends of the rear axle half shafts or on the drive shafts. So, uh, therefore, we've seen in this video uh, that instead of having the uh, intermediate wheel in between uh, the differential box and the bobbin shaft, we have this wheel B and the links. Uh, that entire system can be um, removed and instead of that, we can have this carden shaft which will transfer the speed from uh, the differential box to the uh, bobbin shaft without any uh, loss in speed. Um, and this is an advantage of using a carden shaft over uh, the swing motion. So with this we come to the end of today's lecture and we have seen um, what exactly uh, a swing motion or um, such a system means uh, uh, to the rowing frame. So with this uh, thank you very much.